This video is the fourth in our series covering a basic example of digital image correlation using VIC3D. It picks up after the basic calibration in VicSnap, test acquisition in VicSnap, and importing images and preparing for analysis videos. It assumes you have captured a set of calibration images with an acceptable score, gathered a set of test images in VicSnap, drawn an area of interest, determined optimal subset and step sizes, and run an initial analysis. Of course, many of the next steps depend on individual testing parameters and desired results. In this case, we'll be using the data from the tensile test of a dog bone in an MTS test system that we completed in the earlier video. This video will show some of the options for viewing and exporting data, and it'll cover some of the most common post-processing tools and best practices that are applicable for most analyses. Let's get started by configuring the legend to give us some data we can see. First, double click on the first out file. Change it to 2D view and change it to the contour variable that you are most interested in. In this case, we'll use strain in the Y direction. Note, you can always change this later. Next, click on the Grow Ranges Only box in the top left section under the Auto Scaling tab. Then, click on the Play button in the bottom left to run through the images. This exercise will set the range of the legend by playing through all the images and finding the minimum and maximum values. You can change the speed here. When this finishes, the max and min ranges are set. You can see the difference when you run the sequence again. In some cases, manually setting the range can be a useful tool. Once the range is set, and depending on what exactly the test is covering, we can use various inspector tools to get more detailed information about specific parts of the sample. In this case, we can see some strain concentration happening right around the notch. By default, extraction plots show points, which display the average data as well as the data generated by point type inspector tools and those that average over an area, disks, rectangles, etc. The default tool is the Inspect Point, which can be activated by clicking this button in the Inspector Tools panel on the left. In this case, we will click in the plot to place an Inspector Point in the center and two more at the top and bottom of the sample. Now we have three points which are labeled and ready to be extracted by clicking on the Plot Extractions button here. When the Extraction button is clicked, a plot appears and a new panel called Extraction Tools becomes visible on the left. To add the analog data, simply click on Project and then Analog Data. Then select the corresponding CSV file that was produced in VicSnap. In point extractions, the index is the image count. To plot against time or other analog data, use the X or Y drop-down menu to change from average to analog. You can add or delete points or change the parameters as needed in the panel. The extraction type can be selected from the drop-down menu at the top of the extraction toolbox. There are several other options available in the Inspector Tools panel. Find out details about each in the user manual under Help in the navigation menu. For this test, we'll use a virtual extensometer and the Line Slice tool. First, click on the Inspect Extensometer button. Place the two points of the virtual extensometer across points of interest. Click the Extract button again to bring up the plot window. Notice we don't see any evidence of the extensometer. To view, extensometers must be selected from the pull-down menu at the top of the extraction toolbox as shown here. If both points and extensometers are present, the entry points and extensometers will also be available to show extensometer and point extraction data in a single plot. In extensometer extractions, the index is also image count. You plot several parameters which can be changed here. Note, you need to click enter to see the change. To get a closer view of the data, hold the Shift key and draw a rectangle to highlight the relevant section. This can be done as many times as necessary to get the desired view. At any time, you can play through the data to see the points move. A 
few other things about extraction plots. Right click anywhere in the plot to access the settings dialog, which provides different options to control the plots as seen here. Note, the quick help option shows shortcuts for navigating extraction plots. Next, we'll discuss the line slice tool. Select the line slice tool from the inspector tools panel and place your points in a relevant location. A line slice gives a specific number of points along a line. The default is 200 points regardless of the length of the line, but this can be changed later. When the Extract button is clicked, we now see the option for line slices in the dropdown. In this plot, we are shown 200 points at a given time. In line slice extractions, the index is referring to the points along this line. We are viewing what is happening to each of these points over time. By default, we are only seeing a few lines here. Right click to change the settings as before. Under the line slice tab, notice that only a few images are selected. If we select all, the plot will be indecipherable with too many lines. To control the number of lines shown, right-click and choose the intervals of images. In this case, we'll choose to show every 20th image. Use the Shift key to highlight the area of the plot for more convenient viewing. Note, if you close these extraction windows, they are always accessible in the Extractions tab in the Project Panel as you can see here. Also, you can view the extraction plot from directly in the 2D window. Just right-click and select Extraction. This provides the ability to juxtapose the plot with the 2D image. And you can export this video directly with another right-click. Note, you'll need to manually type .mp4 and then select Video from the drop-down. Then you can watch the frames being exported, and we can see the video file in the location we specified. Next, we'll cover a few other options for exporting directly from the Analysis Workspace in VIC3D. In the Extraction Tool panel, there's an Export button. We'll demonstrate this by creating and exporting the time extraction data from Extraction 4. Clicking this will bring up a dialog which allows you to name your file and set data type, format, ordering, and coordinates. Then click Next. The Next screen allows you to select the data, either Average, Analog, Inspector Elements, and the corresponding files. And the final screen lets you choose the variables that will be exported. When all the parameters are set, click Commit. And the exported CSV file can be found in the indicated folder. The other options include exporting all data, pixel grid data, metric node data, and aggregate statistics. For more information about each of these options, see the user manual. More complex visualization and export options are available in the IRIS workspace, which will be covered in the next video. It is worth noting again that individual testing parameters and desired results will determine much of the analysis and unique challenges that can emerge. Our US-based support team is ready to answer any questions or help guide you through the process. Just get in touch if you're having any problems.